Hello. This presentation is about the LQI control for a dual input DC DC converter. I will start with an introduction and then after that I will present the converter diagram and the modeling equations. After that I will show the state space representation and the LQI design parameters. Also I will present a comparison with tradi traditional controllers and I will show the simulation results and in the end I have the conclusion. So multi-input single output MISO DC DC converters have become more attractive as they incorporate more than one intermittent power source with one power converter. This is applicable in electric vehicles EVs if more reliability is desired by interfacing two battery submodules or a battery and another DC source such as a fuel cell. The main drawback of such converters is mainly their more difficult control and applications, especially when operated as interleaved high voltage gain converters. In this project, the converter is first modeled then its controllability and observability are verified. A linear quadratic regulator, specifically a linear quadratic integrator control scheme is derived to achieve a very low steady state voltage tracking error. A comparison is shown between LQI, hysteresis, and typical current mode control. The DC-DC converter shown in the figure is a MISO system. The converter shown is assumed to be ideal to simplify modeling process. The converter has two operating modes. Mode 1, where MOSFET M1 is off and M2 is on. In this mode, inductor L2 is charging and L1 is discharging. Diode D1 is off and D2 is on. The energy charged in the inductor L1 and capacitor C1 are transmitted to the output. Mode 2, when MOSFET M1 is on and M2 is off. In this mode, L1 is charging and L2 is discharging in C1. D1 is on and D2 is off, blocking the output voltage. Equation 1 shows the overall steady state ideal input to output transfer function. This is basically the sum of both voltages as boosted from the two separate DC input sources Vn1 and Vn2. V out is the converter's output voltage. D1 is the average duty cycle of M1 and D2 is the average duty cycle of M2. Equations 2 to 5 are derived from KCL and KVL laws and represent the dynamic operation of the system. These equations are nonlinear due to the multiplication of time varying quantities. Thus, the desi to design the LQI controller, they must be linearized by constructing a small signal model around a fixed operating output voltage. The table here shows the system parameters. The value of the input voltages are 20 volts and 30 volts. The average duty cycle for the MOSFETs M1 and M2 is 0 0.5 uh, each if operating in steady state. And if we take into consideration the assumption that the system is ideal. The clamp capacitor voltage in ideal operation is 40 volts and the desired output voltage which which is also the output capacitor voltage is 100 volts the currents in l1 and l2 are 4 amps and 4.5 amps respectively the inductor sizes is 270 micro henry for each the capacitor sizes are 4.7 microfarads for the clamped capacitor and 220 microfarads for the output capacitor. The load resistance size is 50 ohms. After linearizing the equations, we
we got the state space matrices of the converter. Matrix A is the system matrix and determines the dynamics of each state in the system. Matrix B is the control matrix and determines how the system input affects the state change. Matrix C is the output matrix and determines the relationship between the system state and the system output. And matrix D is the feed forward matrix and allows for the system input to affect the system output directly. Given the parameters shown in the table in the previous slide, the system is analyzed. All real components of the eigenvalues of the system are negative, which means that the system is stable. The controllability and observability matrices are obtained using MATLAB, and they are both, both full rank, meaning that the system is full state controllable and fully state observable. LQI strategy is selected to achieve a minimum steady state error at the output voltage. Regarding the model system, the optimal LQI controller is designed using the full state feedback control. Moreover, to design a state feedback integrator, the A matrix will be augmented with an additional state which is the error between the desired and the real output voltage, which is the fourth state. The required gain for this integrator will be calculated using the LQI strategy. The new state space matrices are thus A new and B new as shown in this slide. The cost weights QW and RW are selected to determine the new LQI gains KC and KI. It is important to remark that the measurable states suffer from high frequency ripple effects. The weight matrices QW and RW are selected such that QW defines which states should be controlled more tightly than others, and the RW weights define the cost of control action that must be applied depending on the magnitude of the state error. Regarding the matrix RW, it is important to enforce the input duty cycle to have a value with less than 5% triple variation. Using the MATLAB LQI command, the desired gains KC and KI for the regulator and the integrator are obtained as shown here. In this project, the LQI controller performance is compared with two other controllers. The first one is the two-loop gain current mode controller, and the second one is the hysteresis current controller. The main objective is to examine different control techniques in terms of dynamic stability, transient time, and overshoot. The gains proposed in current control scenarios 2 and 3 are obtained based on trial and error methods to achieve the best performance of each control system. While in LQI, the weight factors are selected depending on analyzing the physical and electrical behavior of the power converter system. In addition, the first input variable, which is the duty cycle of the first MOSFET, has no control over the clamped capacitor voltage. However, D2, which is the duty cycle of the second MOSFET, can strongly manage it. MATLAB Simulink is used to verify the performance of these scenarios and the simulation model. The converter maintained its output voltage when the load changed abruptly from 50 to 25 ohms and returned back to its initial value. Four scenarios will be considered and compared. Scenario 1, we will be using an LQI controller. Scenario 2, we will be using a two-gain loop current controller with the proportional gains 0 0.5 and 0 0.75 and the integrator gains is 20. For the scenario 3, we have the KP values 0 0.5 and 2, while for the integrator values, it is 24 both. And for the fourth scenario, we have the hysteresis current controller with KP values 0 0.5 and 0 0.75, and KI is 3.5 for both controllers. 
In the next four slides, I will be showing the simulation results for the four, for the four scenarios. The dynamic response of the output voltage is shown here in this slide. Blue plots represent the case of the LQI scenario. Red and yellow plots represent the cases of using current control mode scenarios with different gain values as shown in the slide before. And the purple color represents the case of the hysteresis current controller. The load current is changing every 0.3 seconds as shown in D. A is a zoomed view of the dynamics from time from the time when the system was switched on. 0.3 seconds is when the load current increased as shown in B and at 0.6 seconds the load current is decreased as shown in C. It is clear in parts B and C of the figure that the case of using LQI the system has smaller transient time comparing it with other scenarios, especially for scenario 3. Both LQI and scenario 2 roughly have similar overshoot magnitude, but different transient times. Scenario 4, hysteresis control, shows a lower overshoot but a much longer transient time, which is about 10 times more than the LQI. This is caused by the high weight factor put on output voltage to be controlled more strictly in LQI controller. The figure here shows the clamped capacitor voltage dynamics at different, time, different times during the simulation. The proposed controller shows significantly better overshoot and transient time compared to the three other scenarios. This is achieved by relatively lower weight factor put on the clamped capacitor to be controlled with higher degree of freedom, which also leads to higher capacitor voltage ripple as shown. The two figures here show the inductor's current dynamics. In part A of the figures, the transient time region of inductor currents is shown at the time interval starting from zero to 4 milliseconds. Using linear quadratic integrator, the inductor currents are strictly following the references with no significant overshoots, while in other scenarios, critical overshoots has been noticed. This may cause a remarkable damage in the converter switches. It is noteworthy to mention that the dynamic behavior of LQI has shown the same performance in both load increasing and load decreasing conditions. Load sharing current between inputs is an issue in multi-input systems which cannot be managed with conventional PI controllers. Hence, one of the LQI control system benefits is that it can determine the amount of control action for each input variable, D1 and D2, which are the duty cycles for the MOSFET, depending on how large the deviation of the state is. This achieves control over each input current independently regardless of other states. The dynamic response of inductor currents is shown here. At t equals 0.3 seconds, a 50% load current increase occurs, while at t equals 0.6 seconds, a 50% load current decrease occurs. In the first scenario, which is the LQI, after a load current decrease occurs, at t equals 0.6 seconds, both the two inputs become roughly sharing the same current value. However, at the load, as the load current increase uh, in the interval between 0.3 and 0.6 seconds, the second input is supplying higher current value. This explains the fact that a lower restriction is put on the second input, so it acts more freely to compensate in critical conditions when more power is required for output. However, this is not the same case with other scenarios where managing load sharing currents is not observed. In conclusion, a virtual hardware was also built on Simulink and validated by comparing its operation with the actual hardware. The objective discussed at the beginning of this paper was achieved.
The designed LQI maintained the output voltage at 100 volts even when the load current was increased by 50% and reduced back to its initial value. Future work would be to design a reduced order observer to estimate the state space variables using the minimum allowable number of actual sensors. These are the references used in our research. And this is the end of this presentation. Thank you.